<laughs> That's just great. Oh, that looks so real. <laughs> oh, looks like he's coming right out of the screen. Oh, <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever uh, played with one of these. It's called a View Master. Pretty neat, huh? Basically, what it is, for those of you who are not familiar, there's a disc, right? And the disc has pictures on it. And actually there's two pictures that are almost identical, usually across the disc from each other. They're off center just slightly from each other. And then you put it in this device and you turn it and you look through these uh, windows and you can see basically a 3D picture right? Uh, Viewmaster has been huge for decades and decades and decades. Well, in the early 1980s, there was a Knight Rider Viewmaster reel where you could buy these discs, put them in this Viewmaster, and pretend you were actually in the world of Knight Rider. Um, they released, I think, three, was it three discs? Yeah, I think it was three discs on the episode Speed Demons. Okay, but it didn't stop there. For a very short window of time in 1984, you could actually purchase a talking Viewmaster set with Knight Rider. This one. Uh, it's actually, it turns out to be fairly rare. I haven't seen a lot of these for sale over the years. Um, and it takes a special talking Viewmaster, right? Looks something like that, or it did. And I think the Talking Viewmaster went through a number of iterations as well. I know they had those back in the 70s as well, but this was a more modern one. So I've had this set for 15 years, a long time. And this is what they look like. So you can see we've got these three discs. We've got the, the standard Viewmaster disc here, right? And then a little record here. And that's how the talking view master would work. You would put this device in the talking view master and um, hit play. And there would be beeps whenever you are to change the card. So it would tell you the story of what you're actually seeing on the picture. It's actually pretty, a pretty neat idea. So, like I said, I've had these for a long time. They've already been, um, they were already like cut open so you can get the record out. Um, so I thought, you know, I've always wondered what was on these. Was it just sound clips from the show? Um, was it someone narrating the episode? I didn't know. So um, my son is huge into um, music, especially antique music. And when I say antique music, I'm talking back into the early 1900s, phonographs, Victrolas, things like that. He is as much of a Victrola and phonograph historian as I am a Knight Rider historian. So that gives you an idea as to his uh, depths of knowledge. But uh, we were talking the other day and somehow the topic of these Viewmaster, the talking Viewmaster came up. And whenever he found out these were records, he started salivating, passed out on the floor, got back up. No, he didn't do any of that. But he was really excited to play these on one of his special machines that he has. So I thought, well, why don't we just take it a step further? And why don't we digitize what's on these records, put it into a video, scan the scan the uh, pictures and the slides, and make a virtual Knight Rider talking Viewmaster video for you guys so you can see exactly what's on here. Um, We've already, obviously, we've done all this. We put it together. And there's some really cool things about this that um, I think you're going to find interesting. First of all, there's um, some pictures on here. They're, they're all from the filming of Speed Demons. But there's some pictures that are from scenes that were not actually in the aired episode, like a cut scene. Um, one I can think of is a scene with Michael and... Um, uh, Lee Carstairs holding one of Lee Carstairs trophies outside, which is never in the episode, but that's in here. And also on these records, there's clips from the show. There's, there's a, a narrator talking, but there's also clips from the show. But what's really neat is it, the, the clips don't have any of the background music or sound effects like you hear in the episode. So you actually hear like the raw 
audio recordings of Hasselhoff and all these people talking in the episode, which is really cool too. So um, we're going to put this together for you and play it for you. First, my son wanted to uh, chime in here and give you a little bit of information about, um, you know, from his perspective, how we kind of put all this together. So in this video, we are playing Talking Viewmaster records along with their original images. And these are the original ones right here. How we figured out that we remembered that we had these is that we were going in an antique store today and we saw a talking Viewmaster player. And my dad remembered that he had these in one of his many bins in the closet. So he decided to dig them out. And me being an expert on these things, all things records and things like that. So I remembered that I had a a machine, a very small machine. The, it's a Gacken record maker, but it can also play small records like this without automatic stop kicking in. So we decided to try and play the records on this machine. And we didn't know what speed because sometimes they played at odd speeds, like not quite 45 RPM or whatever, but these are 33s. So, without further ado, let's get started. When you hear the beep, advance to the next picture. A new assignment for Michael Knight and Kit. At the Foundation, Michael, Devon, and April watch TV replays of an accident which occurred at last year's Oakside motorcycle race. Several of those riders ended up in the hospital, and young Danny Duval was killed. Since the Foundation's co-sponsoring this year's competition, we were really worried when they got this letter. It says Danny Duval was murdered. Even if there's an outside chance that the accident may have been planned, we have our work cut out for us. Michael and Kit make their way to the race course. Michael, I'm afraid we'll have more accidents than we bargained for. This track is in no shape for a race. It's cluttered with debris, potholes, large gaping crevices, and numerous mud puddles. Sounds like a pretty good description to me. You mean that's the way it's supposed to be? Kit, it's like an endurance test. Well, I suppose it's just what these overbred bicycles deserve. At the track, Michael hails one of the riders from last year's race. Lee Carstairs shows Michael his trophies and product endorsements. Yes, your posters are on more walls than Uncle Sam's, huh? No money in posters anymore. It's t-shirts now. That's where the big bucks are. And that's why I say promotion is everything. Just then, a rider who was injured in last year's race arrives at the racetrack. Kelly Travis is a real hot dogger. Michael follows Kelly out to the highway. Michael, up ahead. All right, Kelly! Come over, I want to talk to you! But Kelly continues showboating and jumps kick. What are you trying to pull, big shot? <laughs> I thought it was pretty hot. Yeah, well, I wasn't. <laughs> Neither are you. Get up. <laughs> You're going to have to pull me up, partner. I can't make it alone. I haven't been able to ever since that accident on the mountain. And there's some kind of surgery that could help you? Sure. I want to take two years out of my life. If you stay away from racing that long, you might as well hang it up. That night at a pre-race party, Sabrina, Kelly's sister, is cornered by Wade Fontaine, another of last year's racers. I just thought it was time you and I kissed and made up. Wade, there is no reason to make up. I just don't like you. Well, that's because you never really got a chance to know me. She's never going to get that chance. Please remove cartridge now. Later in the Foundation van, Michael, Devin, and April look at films of last year's race. That's what's been bothering me. Kelly's front wheel isn't moving. If something jammed his wheel, he couldn't handle that bike no matter how good he is. I think the murderer was really after Kelly. I think Danny was an innocent victim. Whom do you suspect? 
I don't know, there's two racers who still hate Kelly. One's name is Wade Fontaine, and the other is Lee Carstairs. Michael races back to Kelly's garage. How could one rider cause another rider's wheel to stop turning? It's easy. You just shoot a little aluminum rod out of a CO2 target pistol right into the spokes. It stops everything cold, and then it disintegrates. That happen a lot? Bicycle racers do it a lot in Europe. Kelly overhears Sabrina admit writing the letter to the Foundation. She has been trying to stop Kelly from racing so that he won't be hurt again. I gotta win this race for Danny. You can't stop me, Sabrina. Not if you love me. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> hey, come on. You ruin your mascara, huh? See you at the racetrack, huh? At the finish line. Just before the race begins, Michael meets Wade again. Hey, listen, Stretch. I'm gonna have to teach you some manners. Ah! Wade misses Michael by a mile and smashes his fist into the trailer. Gee, I hope you can ride with that bad hand today. Ah. Then the racers are off. On the first straightaway, Kelly takes the lead, jumping the first hurdle. Suddenly, Kit calls up the missing information, along with the motive for trying to sabotage the race. Just what I thought, Kit. Every one of Lee's endorsement contracts ends this year. What does that have to do with this race? Lee has to win to reestablish himself as a champion, or no advertisers are going to touch him. Kelly's the only rider equal to Lee. I bet you Lee got caught up in his own sabotage last year, and Danny got the worst of it. Are you going to stop the race? No, Kit. You and I have just become the first four-wheeled motorcycle team in history. In the turn, Lee Carstairs and Kelly Travis are neck and neck. Coming up best behind them is Wade Fontaine. Wait! Fontaine fishtails into a shoulder, flies off his bike. Apparently, Fontaine is all right, just a little shaken. Please remove cartridge now. The spectators are astonished. A black car has entered the race, gaining on the cycles. Michael and Kit scream around a curve. Michael, Carstairs is aiming that device at Kelly. Michael drives the car between the two cycles. Kit becomes a shield for Kelly and forces Carstairs out of the race. Michael, Kelly has stopped at the foot of Widow's Mountain. He must have lost his nerve, Kit! You've got to get up that mountain. I can't. Listen to me! What happened last year wasn't your fault. It was Lee Carstairs. I'm sorry. Without Danny, I'd feel too long going up there. You won't be alone, Kelly. I'm going with you. Michael and Kit join Kelly on the ride to the finish line. Michael, the other races are only 20 seconds behind. All right, Kit. Let's see what those high traction drop downs can really do, pal. Kelly Travis, number 25, running the race of his life, crosses the finish line first. <laughs> did it, kid. Uh, we did it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the day after the race, Kelly gives Michael his racing helmet. Oh, we wanted to thank you for everything, Michael. Yeah, and I want you to have this. I've decided that I'm going to have that surgery. And then I'm going to try and find something else to put my energies into besides racing. Well, I hope it can stand you. You've got a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> races have sparked my interest in fresh air once again. Well, I'll see you later at the Foundation. Whoa! <laughs> Honestly, the fact that Devon would choose that two-wheeled can opener over the comfort of an automobile 
is completely mystified. <laughs> you may have a point there. Please remove cartridge now. So there you go. There is the story of Speed Demons as told by Viewmaster in 1984. Hope you guys enjoyed this. This was kind of a more obscure, you know, type of video, but, uh, you know, it's Knight Rider related, so we're covering it. Um, hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below if you did, and maybe we'll do more like this. So, as always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Catch you next time.